Award-winning journalist and political commentator Koki Roberts has died. She was 75 years old. Roberts' death was announced by ABC News, one of the several media outlets she worked with over the years. The outlet said she died Tuesday due to complications from breast cancer. Her family said in a statement, We will miss Koki beyond measure, both for her contributions and for her love and kindness. After graduating college in 1964, Roberts kicked off her decades-long journalism career in radio. She worked as a foreign correspondent for CBS, then moved on to NPR to cover Capitol Hill. She eventually served as the network's congressional correspondent and became known as one of the founding mothers of NPR. In 1988, Roberts joined ABC News, where she worked for three decades. She received multiple awards and honors throughout her career, including three Emmys and an induction into the Broadcasting and Cable Hall of Fame. On top of all that, she wrote multiple books and co-wrote a political column with her husband, Stephen. Roberts is survived by her husband, two children, and grandchildren. And today, Washington has lost a legendary journalist, Cokie Roberts of ABC News and National Public Radio. Cokie was also literally raised in the halls of Congress, where her father was the majority leader, Hale Boggs. Her mother later became Congresswoman and later ambassador to the Vatican, Lindy Boggs. Cokie was also to fellow women journalists like myself, a mentor, a role model, and a friend. She was a graduate of Wellesley College. She was first among equals here, juggling her many roles, mother, wife, grandmother, with unfailing kindness to all she encountered, especially those of us always trying to emulate her. Koki and her husband, New York Times journalist Steve Roberts, were married in the Boggs' family home, where Koki and Steve still live to this day, with President Lyndon Johnson attending their wedding. She was the breakout star of This Week with David Brinkley, on the round table every Sunday morning in what became appointment television. Koki covered 22 national conventions in every presidential debate during her long tenure, more than 40 years as a journalist. Her colleague, George Stephanopoulos, today saying that he was on the phone with her just last Thursday to tell her how much he missed having her there in Houston for the debate. She was the author and also with her husband, co-author of many books, many bestsellers, including one on First Ladies entitled Ladies of Liberty, The Women Who Shaped Our Nation. Nancy Pelosi said today, Cokie Roberts was a trailblazer who forever transformed the role of women in the newsroom and in our history books. Over five decades of celebrated journalism, Cokie shone a powerful light on the unsung women heroes who built our nation, but whose stories have long gone untold. President Obama said in a statement she was a constant over 40 years of a shifting media landscape and changing world, informing voters about the issues of our time, mentoring young journalists every step of the way. Cokie successfully fought breast cancer back in 2002. She helped countless, countless numbers of women who were later diagnosed with the disease. I can attest to that myself. ABC News reports she passed away at the age of 75 due to complications treating a recurrence of breast cancer. Having worked... She's been a fixture behind the news desk for over 40 years. We're following two major stories tonight. Reporting on the stories that shape generations. After all, President Clinton's problems with Jennifer Flowers were not just her word, it was tape recordings. Was Journalism was her calling, but politics, well, that was Cokie's passion. As a reporter and author, she trailblazed her way through an industry where women were just breaking through. Her full name was Mary Martha Corinne Morrison Claiborne Roberts, but anyone who knew her affectionately called her Cokie. Thank you for having me, and please call me Cokie. Well, I will, but I'm from the South, too. Born in Louisiana in 1943, Cokie Roberts was the daughter of longtime U.S. representatives Hale Boggs and Lindy Boggs, who collectively served the people of New Orleans for 46 years. The other women who were in Washington when I was growing up. We watched run everything. Uh, we watched them run the political conventions, campaigns. Through her parents, she enjoyed a front row seat to history and politics, which shaped her interest in Washington, learning the world of Congress the way other children learn to walk and talk. As a young girl, she considered to joining the family business. But in college, her interest in journalism was strengthened by her future husband, Steve Roberts. But her love and close ties to Washington were never far behind. President Lyndon B. Johnson 
famously even attended her wedding in 1966. She began working as an anchor in Washington at 21, and shortly after headed to New York to work as a reporter. It was essentially reporting and then writing very brief little stories, and I loved it. Before landing at National Public Radio as a political commentator. From ABC News. But in 1988, she found her home right here. The American people don't want this to go on. But he for can't do, year. and I didn't inhale, and I didn't, uh, you know, I didn't, I wasn't ever drafted. And I At avoided. ABC News, working as a contributor on This Week. Cokie's razor sharp mind. It's your definition of womanized. Most term. women know it when they see it, Senator. Matched only by her infinite kindness when the cameras right. stopped rolling. Yeah. I have three cameras here. <laughs> you must be a very important person. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> and always, <laughs> always the smile, that giggle, her sense of humor. I can't see, but that ends it. <laughs> this week would become her home, co anchoring the show with Sam Donaldson from 1996 to 2002. Until next week, that's this week. From there, she would become a staple of ABC News political coverage, interviewing presidents, politicians, and first ladies embodying the idea of journalistic integrity and female empowerment. I hate to say it, John, but it's a female thing. Women do work together a lot. Uh, much more so than their husbands. Much more so than men. <laughs> thank you, thank you. She would write several New York Times bestsellers recounting the untold and remarkable contributions of women in American history. When I started out in the world of work, it was illegal for women to become generals or admirals. Uh, so there's mm -hmm. a huge change in the years that, that I've been plowing this turf. <laughs> <laughs> Receive countless awards, be cited as one of the 50 greatest women in the history of broadcasting, and hold more than 30 honorary degrees, inspiring students with words at commencements all across the country. You must look at the institutions of government, politics, business, the academy, and journalism, and hold them accountable to the people they are supposed to serve. In 2002, battling breast cancer and bravely facing going on the air wearing a wig. I felt um, first going on the air in a wig that I looked really goofy. And, um, and election night 2002, I, it was my best wig. It was the human hair wig, not the synthetic mm -hmm. wig. And I thought it just looked awful. Yeah. So I don't know, it's, so it, it's, it's hard. Koki, always the inspiration for those who had the privilege and were blessed to work by her side. She made each one of her fellow colleagues better by always striving for the best and by always remembering and reminding us all to keep the compassion in journalism. Thank you for your support. It's important. Koki Roberts, the beloved mother of two, grandmother of six, and a legend to us all.